In this video, we're going to be talking about the promotion period. Now, when you're ready to promote, that means that the date has been set, the landing pages are complete, and that you have a general idea of how many people you want to get either in the room or online. Now, when the time comes to actually promote the event, what you're going to want to do is think about channels. You can go either 100% online, 100% offline, or a mix of the two. The only thing that is important is that the date that you've picked for your event is far enough in the future that you have a good three to four weeks to recruit people to come to your event. So you're going to be thinking about those channels, the mix that you want to have. My recommendation before you start is that don't overdo it. Pick a few channels that are relevant to you that maybe you've had successes in the past and then if it's, does, it's not going according to plan, just add more channels as the date approaches. When you do pick a channel, you have a lot of options. So we're going to go over the channels in the slide together. But if you have any other channels in mind that you've had successes in the past with or that you want to try, feel, please feel free to go ahead and leverage that. So you have uh, multiple choices. So you can choose to have an email campaign going out to your contacts, whether they're existing clients or existing leads to invite them to the event. You can also choose to do some social advertising. Um, if you do go the advertising way on social media, I strongly recommend that you limit your presence on LinkedIn. It has a very, very powerful tool to target the audience that you want by job titles or experience or industry or vertical geography so there's a ton of stuff that you can do with the targeting it is also a b2b mindset so they're more uh, prepared to hear about other businesses and the pitch and the benefits that they can give them other than that what you want to you're going to want to do is make sure that you have a company page set up to run the ads as well as a, an advertising account in that advertising account, you're going to want to make sure that there's a credit card that is linked to it. Those uh, two, those three aspects are required for you to launch your campaigns. Other than that, you can find help on the LinkedIn help website. It is fairly uh, user friendly and very uh, short learning curve to get going. The one thing that I want to say, though, is that you want uh, to keep uh, uh, your eyes on the budget that you've set. It is not really a set and forget motion. You want to make sure that you want to stay within the budget that you've set. There are multiple options to do so, but keep looking just to make sure that it's going according to plan. Other than that, if you choose to go on an other social media to do advertising, I recommend that you use those other platforms as a remarketing motion rather than a first touch motion, simply because uh, the other accounts that people are going to have are more uh, personal than business. So uh, if you already had a first touch on LinkedIn and you want to retarget the people that did not convert through those ads, it is a good idea to go multi-channel for a remarketing motion. Other than that, uh, don't forget that social medias also have organic posts. Those are free. You can leverage your company page and your personal profile. You can ask your employees to spread that message and share the landing page as well or share the banners that were provided in the kit. So make sure that you put the social media, either paid or organic, to good use. Other than that, those banners are also really useful uh, when it comes to time to maybe put them on your website, uh, either on the homepage or in different service pages that you have throughout. I strongly encourage that you leverage those visuals and just put them out there uh, during the recruitment period. You also could do a short video capsule just to invite people on social media as well if you're tired of just sharing images. The little videos are very engaging and it's always better to have a, a, a human talking in motion than having a still image. And don't overcomplicate it. If you have a good enough phone, natural light and a tripod, you're probably good to go to film a little engaging and genuine capsule just to make sure that you invite the people that you really want to come. And lastly, um, the one channel that I really uh, recommend that is free, only takes a little bit of time, is to create a blog article. And that piece of content is going to be used uh, multi-channel after that as you share it. 
um, the blog article that you write, just make sure that it highlights the benefits and uh, has an educational twist to it. You don't want it to be salesy. You don't want it to be a pitch. You want to give them little nuggets of what they're going to learn by coming to the event and keeping the good stuff for them to register and to come see you. If you do choose to go the offline route, then what you can do is do a little bit of a call blitz, either to existing leads or uh, to leads that you, to, to existing clients, and just make sure that you already have a relationship with the people that you're gonna call, um, maybe as part as your monthly touch points to your recurring clients, when, you, when it is time to show uh, reports or just network performances and stuff like that as part of your usual follow-ups, make sure that you just drop a little line about the fact that you're hosting an event that could benefit them. After that, there's also uh, a lot of networking groups that are local, such as BNI or Chambers of Commerce. I've seen members of the group of the program leverage them to, to, good, to, good, to good results. So make sure that if that is an option for you, that you use it as well. I've also seen partners print out little postcard invitations and drop them at the businesses that they really want to do business with. That way it kind of stands out a little bit and you can um, send them an email following the postcard just to reinforce the message and build a relationship. And lastly, I've even seen partners leverage, leverage some city billboards. Uh, that are timely for the announcements and stuff like that. So you can definitely uh, go outside of the box and pick some channels that could be engaging and original just to make sure that your message is heard. And after, um, so that, that was the channels that are available to you. Of course, there are others. But when the, com when the time comes to pick your channels, what you're going to want to do is Decide whether you want an event that is geared towards your current client or potential leads. So if you want to go get new leads, I strongly recommend that you do put advertising in the mix because that's the way that you're going to get in front of people that don't know you already. Um, if you have an event that is geared towards existing clients, then you can leverage your contact list. You can either by call or by email, you can send out uh, those little videos like we mentioned. It's a lot easier and cheaper, but at the end of the day, upselling is not always the easiest route. Sometimes you just want fresh, uh, fresh blood in your, in your contacts to be able to get uh, a new wave of clients going. After that, a good, a good best practice is to use what have already worked for you in the past. So everything that you've had success with as a channel or as a marketing effort, just re-roll it for that event and invite people in the same way that you've seen success before. Uh, it, it's going to be much quicker for you than learning a new tactic. When you do pick your channel, always keep the potential client that you want to have in mind and keep the type of person that they are very top of mind. If, if you're looking to recruit people to come to your event and that you put ads on TikTok, chances are that it's a bad match uh, persona to channel. So you're not going to see a lot of results. If you're looking for business people that are, uh, you know, that they're part of a certain community that you know, then make sure that you spread that message on the community. Reddit, for example, is a good channel for that. And after that, just don't overdo it. Keep it manageable at first. And if the first channels that you try don't work, then make sure that you try others. It's evolving and nothing is set in stone. It's not a set it and forgetting approach. During the promotion period, chances are that you're gonna be most engaged in your marketing than uh, while you were planning your event or after you host it. So that little sprint right there is really important for you to keep an eye on your results and optimize the content that you're putting out. All right, those, that's about it for the promotional aspect. So we're going to be moving on to the next capsule.